I'm I'm here with you hanging out from my home in San Diego. It's a beautiful day outside, and I'm so I couldn't be happier to be spending some time with you and we'll talk about something really really cool in a few minutes. And I got a buddy, <laughs> an amazing man, incredible father, incredible husband, incredible business leader. Uh, he's a leader in the financial freedom movement, and and it really starts from how he's lived his own life, where he's gone from a workaholic and a guy who was a uh, you know the the classic uh, suit and tie. Uh, up up before dawn and out and didn't see his kids and corner office and all that whole corporate thing to where he is now that well every day is Saturday <laughs> but I don't want to steal any of his thunder because he tells his story so much better than me uh, Sam Sam Crowley buddy how are you hey I'm doing good man I'm five inches of snow in Cincinnati today you're in San Diego huh that's awesome Wait, thanks for rubbing it in yeah yeah some other people are feeling the pain of that one right now too Hey, listen. I'm just going to pass the baton to you, if you don't mind. Would you would you let all of our viewers know a little bit about your company and about what you're committed to in your life? And because uh, I love you, and, and you've got one of the most amazing stories of of creating financial freedom, which is the whole point of the program Never Work Again. That the people who are watching this video are enrolled to go to Never Work Again, or they're part of our Quantum Leap program, and they're actually eligible to attend this. And really, what I want for them, my intention is not only that they get to know you a little. Little bit of and about your story, but they know, they get some of the meat uh, of what it is that you're going to be teaching and never work again, and how they could actually use this in their life, not hypothetically, not in a year, but literally the moment they have to create financial freedom. You know, one drop at a time, one one you know one step at a time, if you will. Yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak at Never Work Again. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we are going to absolutely crush it, everybody in the room, everybody that makes a decision to be there uh, in that room. There's just an energy, man. There's a real synergy that goes on at the live events. I was going to live events 15 years ago because I was stuck in a cubicle, like you mentioned. I would go to real estate events and personal development events, and I never knew. I hung, around, I hung around a bunch of corporate stiffs, so all we did was go to work, go to happy hour, and go golfing. I mean, that was really all we ever did, and I had no life. And so the very things that you guys teach at Never Work Again, I wanted that information, and uh, I was starving for it, man. I would jump on an airplane at a moment's notice just to go to be around people that thought differently than I did because I just knew that there had to be something out there, man. So I quit my job May 6, 2005. Um, I know the date, obviously, like it was yesterday. My daughter Madeline used to ask me, Daddy, is tomorrow Saturday all the time? And so finally I asked her, you know, why do you keep asking me that? And she said, because it's the only day we get a chance to see each other. Now, she's three and a half, you know. And so since I've gone on to have three more girls, so now I've got four girls, uh, <laughs> and it's just really a – I guess that's a whole other uh, hangout to talk about that. <laughs> it is. I got three girls of my own, so I know what you mean. Yeah, man. Yeah, so being a dad is kind of all I ever wanted to do. My dad left my mom to raise eight kids when I was three months old, so I kind of had my big bucket list. Number one was to just be a dad because I, I was kind of this college dropout, ex-stuttering, just kind of bouncing around where the party was kind of guy. I didn't really – I kind of wanted to be something, and – I wanted to lead a life of significance, and I had no significance. I really didn't. I was just kind of this, uh, you know, uh, nomad, you know, kind of bouncing around out there. So I got married. I settled down. I had kids, and I started to realize the power of being a dad. But then you got this problem, Adam, is that the good news is you have kids, and, and they look to you like – you could have the worst day. You know what it's like. You have three kids. When you used to be a, a lawyer, you'd walk in have the worst day in the world. Your kids look up at you, and it's like, Daddy. And they're like, everything goes away. You know what I mean? It's like – you could have the worst day, and when people come to Never Work Again, I'll share some very dramatic stories of people that have taken my podcasting class and have literally changed their lives because they've been able to get this message out, and that's what I started doing. I, I started podcasting, which a lot of people still in this day and age don't know what it is and don't even know how, the power of it. You know, I speak to 100,000 people every month for free, and there's no charge to get this message out, and here's the beauty. Everybody's got a message. So... When I quit my job and I went for my job. Yeah, one more time. That that deserves re repetition. Which one? Everybody. <laughs> everybody's got a message. You know, everybody does. And I think we all get kind of short. So, by the way, I speak so fast. When you're an ex-stutter, I'm just trying to get into the last 20 minute, 20 years of my life in about the next 15 minutes. So, I, I speak really, really fast. And... I didn't think I had a message because who, who cares about a guy that just wants to be a dad, you know, until you find 
moms and dads out there that that's all they want to do, but they, they don't think it's uh, they don't think that that's really worthy because we're all going after a gold watch or a forty year you know uh, thanks for having you with us type of ceremony at the end of the corporate life. Nobody gives really enough credence to just uh, leading a life of significance, you know. And we all want the we all go after money and wealth and all that, but significance. Uh, success without significance is really failure. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, success without significance is really failure. Because what else? I mean, what else? You can, you know, you can't tie a U-Haul to your hearse. I mean, it's really you want to be able to do something. So I started getting my message out on iTunes, and it just started building and building and building. I was like, wow, man, this is this is something pretty well. Like a, a dopey guy like me can just scream into a microphone, get hundreds and thousands of listeners that turn into tens of thousands of customers, and I never got to leave my uh, my office. You know, it's like I this is how I dress to go to work for the last ten years. I mean, this is <laughs> this is about as good as it gets, man. And uh, I think that it's really I've simplified and I've really cut down my lifestyle so much that. If we want to go on a trip, we go to a house up near Lake Erie. Like we just buy a house and renovate. Whatever we want to do, we do. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying I really made a decision to play big about 10 years ago. But I took the smallest thought of just being free and being a dad and just blew that up into what's now every day is Saturday. It's a brand, it's a book, it's a podcast, it's a group, it's a movement. And anybody that's in Orlando is going to learn the real secret to making every day a Saturday. And what it means is simply you look up at the clock and you can't believe, like the clock's right here, you can't believe you got to stop doing what you're doing because you love it that much. It's a mindset. It's not a circumstance. And it's just being able to say, wow, I don't want to stop doing this, as opposed to a job. You're literally like this. I mean, you're like, is it 5 o'clock? Is it 5 o'clock yet? Is it 5 o'clock yet? So never work again, and every day is Saturday. I mean, come on, man. I can't think of two things that come together any better than those two phrases. You know, I'm fired up to be in Orlando. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's the same. Th I, I'm, I'm home. I get to spend the day in my house. I'll see the kids when they get home from school. And, uh, and I, you know, I go in the office. I, you know, we have an office, so yeah. I'll be there. But the truth is, I don't ever dread. You know what the thing for me, Sam, was, and you're right, I spent 18 years as a lawyer, so it's not like I don't have my own pain, um, you know, working, you know, being a workaholic and all that. So it, it's uh, it's still with me. I'm more like a recovering attorney or something, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. Nice day, but you know, Sunday night, I used to get this feeling of dread. I don't know if you ever felt that way, but all the time. The weekend was over. Uh, I had gotten just this much time with the kids and with my wife, and I got to get maybe one good sleep in, you know, and I was just starting to feel like my old self again. And now it's seven o'clock at night, and I'm thinking, I can't believe tomorrow's Monday. I and know. My, my life, the, the difference between Sunday and Monday, this is probably a great, a great subject for a blog or, or a book or whatever, a movie, I don't know what, you know, but the, the, the huge difference between the feeling and the emotions and even just chemically, I think what was going on in my body uh, between Sunday and Monday is just, yep. you know, it's like a different life, you know, so, um, and that's why to me, you know, I'm, I'm so committed to help other people not to do what I do. I mean, you know, we all have to do our own thing. So this works for me. You do the thing that works for you. I think what's special about the program, why I'm adamant that people need to attend it, is that I started I started at Network Again. I was a student. I'm a product. I'm the CEO of this company, but I'm a product of the product. You know, it's uh, it's like the guy who is the uh, – I'm not only the president, but I'm also a member of the hair club as well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. and that's I think that's what you have to be I mean because otherwise if you don't eat the cooking I don't you know won't go off on a tear about this but in your own business um, and I know we've got a lot of people who are in a job and there are other people in their own business um, and truthfully if you've got a business where you know you can't take off the four days to attend this program and and uh, I got the dates here it's December 11th to the 13th at the Caribe Royale in Orlando so that's the event that you'll be presenting at um, and then we've got another one the week before in 
beautiful Palm Desert, California. And uh, but I mean, if you can't take off the three, four, five days it takes to to learn some things that changed my life, changed your life. Now it, it's like you're. You're like a person who wants to lose weight, and, and the way you say it is, "Look, I'll I'll begin to exercise as soon as I, I lose 20 pounds," and 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 it just doesn't work like that. You'll never create financial freedom working your job. You'll never be in a business if your business requires you to be there. And I know that's counterintuitive for most people. They think, "Well, I own a business because I make the rules and I pay the bills and I pay other people a salary." But the truth is, if you can't take time off when you want to, to be so for me to go to my kids' plays, to, to go to their tournaments or their wrestling or their you know cheerleader. If I can't decide to do that any time I want to, I'm not free. Right. And that was my, my practice of law was I had cases, I had court deadlines, I had papers, I had to sleep in the office sometime. I mean, all of those things came first and my family and my life and my even my own inner peace came second. And and to me, there's a shift, a fundamental shift in your mindset, and you used that word earlier, and when your mind always is looking for opportunity to create income without working for it, meaning through your business, it could be through something you start part-time, it could be through podcasting, it could be through something uh, that's on the internet, it could be through real estate, I mean, there's no limit, it's limitless. The number of ways that you can actually create income so that you can free yourself up, free your time up. And, and once that mindset has changed so that that's the path of least resistance, that you're not always security um, through a job, through like you said, the buying into the myth that you put your 30, 40 years in and you get the gold watch and you get the retirement party and you get the big pension and it's a joke. And you know how we know it's a joke? Because all you got to do is go to Walmart or Costco or any of these places and you will see 70-year-old people that are working there. And not because they, they decided that instead of spending time with their grandkids, they'd rather spend their time working in Walmart. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's a product of the decisions and, and the mindset and, and not just what their mindset was, but the mindset of our culture at the time when they were putting in their 30, 40 years on the, on the you know, on the hill or whatever it is so yeah it, it's it's very impactful work and you know Sam if you wouldn't mind give us a little bit of the details of some of the things that you were able to do to shift your life around so that you have the freedom to, to like you say work in a t-shirt that's beautiful and uh, be able to see your kids and how some of those things are, are going to be able to be imparted at the event to our students so that they don't just go in because I'm not I would never tell somebody to leave family, leave your job, leave your business, leave your dog and your cat um, if this program wasn't going to change you on the spot. I mean, I went there and I was a workaholic when I attended this program and I walked out and I was forever changed and to this day, and the reason is that we brainwash, I mean, I'm going to just say it, call it for what it is. We, have, we use very sophisticated super learning brain change technology. Uh, you can call it what you want, but it really is brainwashing. We literally uh, get in there and we work with the dendrites of people's brains like it was done for me so that I see that um, working and putting trading my hours for dollars is not the path to freedom. And I've looked uh, from, the, from the day that I graduated that program, I walked out of there and all I did was look for ways in which I could leverage my talent and get paid for value versus time, mm -hmm. and, and my whole life shifted, and I'm sure it was the same for you. No, you're right. I mean, some of the things we'll talk about in Orlando, at least from my perspective, is, uh, well, first of all, to answer your, your Virgil question, you know, some of the things that changed, um, I realized early on that rich people buy their time and poor people sell it, okay? So I learned early on that I need to really be protective of my time and go buy it, meaning... If I don't know how to program a, a website or design a page, I'll go pay somebody to do it. Somebody else is going to sell their time to me for five, ten, twenty dollars an hour someplace around the world, and I'm perfectly okay with that because I value my time at much more of a higher rate than that. So that's one of the things I really had to learn the very first time I started out as an entrepreneur is that rich people buy their time and poor people sell it. Now, 
if you're currently an employee, you're selling your time, whether you're getting a salary for it, an hourly wage, or anything like that. And I'm not speaking derogatorily. Look, my mom uh, worked her entire life, okay? And uh, she was an employee, a single mom raising eight kids. She'll be the first to tell you she sold her time. And basically sold her soul because essentially she couldn't spend any time, never went to baseball games, basketball games, anything like this, that, and it's not her fault. That's all she knew because she had to keep the lights on. So, you know, you got to ask yourself, is the pain of moving forward greater or less than the pain of going back? If you want to take a really big step as an entrepreneur, the pain of moving forward is not nearly as much as it is staying where you are and staying still. That could be Getting on a plane and going to Orlando, that could be once you leave, never work again, going and taking the first step towards your business. The pain is never going to be as much as it is staying at home, okay, and not doing anything. That's going to be much more painful. So that's one of the things that really resonated with me as in this entrepreneurial journey. And then a lot of the things I'm going to teach in Orlando revolve around this message that everybody has. You have a message, Adam. I have a message. Mrs. McGillicuddy in Lincoln, Nebraska has a message. Now, whether she believes she has a message, then we start to get into what you're going to teach and what I'm going to come behind and teach how what you guys talk about working here. I'm going to take it from here to the mouth and get it out. And you don't got to be Oprah Winfrey or Tony Robbins or the late great Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar. As a matter of fact, the less trained you are in speaking, the more successful your message is going to be. Because let's face it, you and I can spot a well-trained uh, infomercial type person a mile away, but so can somebody else. Imagine being plugged into somebody who sounds like us or any single mom out there that wants to teach on, you name it, gardening, uh, work at home projects, computer repair, lighting. I'm just looking refrigeration. I'm looking around video around my office. There are billions and billions of podcasts downloaded on iTunes and there is no competition. And when you see what I put up on the screen in Orlando, you are going to fall over in your chair because you will not believe the amount of opportunity there for the average person. I don't want anybody, nobody that's gone through the thousands of people that gone through my sat in that seat. If you're in that seat in Orlando, you are going to be one of the a select group of people that are going to learn this information. And nobody's gone through this training and come out thinking, wow, it's just too hard or it's too competitive. Or, it's actually very easy and there's no competition. I love to fish in a pond that's completely stocked and nobody else knows about it. It's like going out on a Saturday morning at eight in the morning and you cast your eye and there's nobody else around and you're just shh, shh. so that look, I started podcasting in knee deep in a chapter thirteen bankruptcy. I had no I mean and that's another thing I want to make sure we get out on this call. I I'm not a trust fund baby. I'm not somebody I when I left my job in corporate and I'm going to share this whole, you will not believe what I did to go bankrupt. I'm not even going to tell anybody because I got to save this one. <laughs> you know the story. It is, you couldn't write a worse story. Like nobody in Hollywood would ever even buy that script because they wouldn't think there's somebody that stupid that actually exists someplace on the planet. Okay. I lost $300,000 in 90 days and I didn't even get a chance to enjoy any of it. It was like a, a I didn't go to Vegas, but it's as if I went to a, like a, a weekend long Vegas bender and uh, came home with absolutely nothing but the shirt on my back. And then In amnesia. What's that? In amnesia. In amnesia. And then after that horrible ordeal is when I started podcasting. And that's when I built the million dollar brand. And that's when I started this whole never work again philosophy in my own mind, in my own home. And man, it's a beautiful story. And it's not because it's my story, because I'm going to make the individual sitting in that seat in Orlando put themselves in this story and watch their own movie play out. And it's going to be amazing, man. I'm, I'm really jacked up about it because I know the lives that are going to change by the people that choose to be there and then choose to take the information that I'm... Look, I, I, I let everything out, man. I show you everything. And when you get in that in that room and you see it, you're going to be able to say, wow, Sam's right. It's that easy. And I promise you it's that easy. What, what I love about you among a lot of things truly is, is your transparency. So I would think that anybody that's watching this right now, they, they feel, they get who you are. Um, yeah. You're a regular guy. Look, I'm a kid from, from uh, I grew up in, in New York City in a uh, borough of the city, Queens, Bayside, Queens. 
share an apartment the size of like a tiny little closet with my brother and my father was a civil servant, my mother worked full time and even when I became a lawyer, so some people say, well, you know, you were a lawyer, at least you were a lawyer, but you described your mom, we were, we we're kin, <laughs> we were the same. I was selling my soul for money and, uh, and the truth is when you trade your time uh, for, for money, at some point you, you start to feel, or at least I, I can only speak from my own experience and maybe this was what your mom was feeling, I felt like my, my, my insides were dying. Yeah. And, and that's an awful feeling to be in your late 30s and feel like yeah. the best part of you. So for me, I'd say my heart, that, that my heart was dying. Because um, I was not, you know, use the word um, significance. To me, the word is like I describe the same thing as fulfillment. I want. I knew I had a. I had value to share, and I knew that there was a reason that I was on this earth, and it wasn't doing what I was doing. There's nothing wrong with what people do in that profession. I don't put it down. It just wasn't my calling. And um, and what I love is that you empower people to know not only that they have a voice, that they have a message, and which is something that we speak to as well. And, and that's why I know we're in great alignment um, to have you be one of our our master facilitators. Is that you know, there's a vehicle. People, first they get over the hurdle of, you know, do I actually have something important to say? Like you said, you know, somebody in Oshkosh, Wisconsin or wherever it is, you know, and, and you think, well, maybe, maybe I, I've been a mom my whole life and my kids are out of the house now and I don't, you know, yeah, I want to be financially free and yeah, I, maybe I have something to say. It's like, no, you have something to say. There is someone. I mean, I know that, that you've got countless testimonials of people who've said that same thing, you know, I don't have a message or nobody's going to listen to me or what do yeah. I know? And then all of a sudden they find that there's a huge audience of people just like them. Yeah, every time I say to somebody, you know, uh, I slept in my office and I've said this to thousands of people, say, how many of you ever slept in your office and made people raise their hand? I said, don't you think there should be like a, an online, you know, like a recovery yeah. program online for us guys, people like us, right? Everybody laughs, you know, it's like, because you think you're alone. Yeah. That's the crazy part, is that there are people just like you, and I don't mean just in North America, that's the beauty of podcasting as I see it, is it's completely global. Yeah. That's why the market is limitless. It's 7 billion people, and, and God knows there's you know, probably 3 billion that have access to the, to the vehicle for you to get your message out. And so to me, I love things that work, and what I really love are things that work and that they're simple. And yep. so that's, you know, I, I could go on and on about that, but truthfully, uh, it'll be a blessing, as you say, for the people that are lucky enough to be in those seats um, and to spend time with you because you're one of the most transparent, congruent people I know. And yet just whatever you see is exactly who you are. I don't think you really care much about what anybody thinks at this point because you have to be able to not care. Am I, am I close to accurate on that one, Sam? <laughs> Yeah, you're dead on, man. You're dead on. It's a, it's a, it's a great, you know. Once you finally lift that, not caring what anybody thinks about you, and you kind of do your thing, that's when greatness shines, man. So yeah, I'm fired up, dude. I gotta wear a seatbelt though, because I'm literally my leg, my leg is going right now like it's a friggin' jackhammer, and I don't know. I could talk for another two hours, so I gotta let. I just gotta kind of settle down because that's Orlando's gonna be off the hook though. That that much I know. Take some deep breaths, all right. We're, see what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep Sam. Sam. Like uh, uh, I was never. I'm not a rodeo guy. All right, so I don't have any rodeo experience here. But I, I've seen it. I've seen it on TV. Okay, and it's like Sam's like one of those bulls, and and he's and we got him in the corral. <laughs> and as soon as we open the gate, I don't even know what's gonna happen. It's always just it's just a, a trip. That's, yeah, that makes two of us. <laughs> but uh, the only thing. I can see our Peaks family for a while, and everything I've ever heard is that people just not only do they get so much value out of what you teach, so it changes their life right there on the spot, and the folks that, that have decided that they also want to continue to work with you later on, they just, they rave, they rave, they rave. So here's the thing. We're going to wrap this up now very quickly. Um, the bottom line is this, that if you're, if you're watching this and you're saying to yourself, man, I would love to go, but... All right. Here's the thing. I know Sam and I feel the same way about this. Don't don't show me your butt. I don't want to look at your butt. Sam doesn't want to hear your butt. Look at your butt, because Sam was in a situation that was pretty rough, and I was in my own situation that was pretty rough, and everybody's in a situation that's pretty rough. 
And the only thing that's going to change for you is if you decide to do something different. And if you step out, and, and I got to tell you, you know, call it what it is, you can't do something small. You've got to be bold. And if, if, the, if you're saying to yourself, you can't get to Orlando or to California in early December and spend three, four days to not only learn from people like Sam, but to have your, your brain rewired for the purposes of seeing and being able to seize opportunities to create passive income. And I don't mean you're going to get free tomorrow. That's not the way it works. For some people, they walk in and they reposition assets. They learn some things about how to do that. They walk out free, which is pretty nuts but it happens all the time and we get people that are writing to us six months later saying you know I got one stream two streams all of a sudden they're free because they have a simple lifestyle I don't have a big big nut to crack every month and you know so they're free but we get a lot of people that two three years later they say I just wouldn't even believe what's happened to me I've taken six vacations a year like I spent time with my family I have money that comes to me from dis different sources. I, I get it. I, I get it. It's like the light bulb in their head just got screwed on. And, and, and they attribute it just like I do to this program. This is where it began. Because I don't know about you, but I didn't learn how to create financial freedom in high school. I didn't learn it in junior high school. I didn't learn it in college or in law school. All I learned was the simple method. You work really hard so that someday you can retire and live the life of your dreams. And that is a flippin' joke. So the bottom line is, I don't care what your excuse is, you, you, gotta, you gotta stop lying to yourself. That someday in the future is gonna be a better time for you to create what you want. You are, you are smart enough and powerful enough and empowered enough and anything you're, that you think you're lacking, I guarantee you we can help you with. So you've got support going for you. The only thing you need to do is make a frickin' decision that you're not gonna tolerate that mediocrity anymore. You're not going to tolerate working in a job that isn't getting where, getting you where you want to go or working in a business where you've got the, you know, it's like your own business and you have the worst boss on planet earth. And I know that one because that was mine. The bottom line is you need to be able to systemize your business so that it works without you. Then you actually have a business. And if you're not in a business, then we want to move you into a situation where you can start earning money in a way that, that rich and successful people earn money. I love what you said, Sam. You know that rich people are, they buy their time and poor people sell it. I'm going to repeat that. Rich people buy back their time because they know they can never get enough of that. You can't, can't, you can't ever get your child's third birthday party back. That's right. You know, that's a once in a lifetime thing. So the last thing I'm going to say is um, I'm, I'm working on this all the time for myself. I know, Sam, you're a lifelong learner. I was reading this book. A buddy of mine gave me this the other day called The Ten Commitments. Uh, David Simon, he's actually partnered up uh, for many, many years with Deepak Chopra. It's Simon and, and Chopra. They uh, created the Chopra Center. And Anyway, beautiful man, wrote an amazing book. And I, uh, I started reading the book, and I got pretty far into it. Um, but I want, I want to just share that the first commitment, so of these ten commitments, Commitment. David Sonny is called the Ten Commitments, and they're sort of based. Um, they parallel the Ten Commandments. Is how it, how it works. It's a very cool concept. But he says the first commitment is this: I commit to freedom. See what that says? I commit to freedom. Everybody that's watching this, I hope what you what you're feeling is that you need to commit to freedom. And if you commit to freedom now, then you'll be that much closer to having the kinds of things that you want in your life. Because while it's okay to come next year, you're putting your freedom off 12 more months. And, and that hurts my heart. So anyway, I look forward to seeing all of you. We love you. I hope you enjoyed Sam. This guy is just flipping awesome. Sam, I'm going to give you a high five. Thanks for hanging out, buddy. Got it, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. I'll see everybody in Orlando. We'll see ya.